purpose of this video is going to be to show you, the Elite Dangerous player, how to go find a bunch of random encoded materials for engineering. First thing is obviously we're going to go into the game. In this case, since you're going to be farming, you're going to be logging out and logging back in multiple times. Just use solo play. Now, the idea behind this video is actually taken from one from Down to Earth Astronomy from a couple of years ago. Uh, that video that requires you to wait for the ship that you want to scan to be in an anarchy system unless you want to deal with the authorities every single time. And this video is actually going to show you how to skip that. So if you're not familiar with the process already and you don't want to watch my entire video, you can go watch Down to Earth Astronomy's video. It's linked here. If you are familiar with it, then I'm going to actually just show you real quick what you need to do to add to it towards the end. So, we're going to deploy our hardpoints. We're going to select the ship. Scan it. Hackable data transmitter. Again, if you can't find it, it's there in your contacts. Scan it after you're at 350 or less. Go find the limpet docking point. Get a little bit closer just to save a little bit of time on silent running. Engage silent running. Fire your limpet. I took a little bit too long on firing the limpet. The first trigger didn't register. And that just means that you just need to watch your heat. If you go over 100% for a little while, it's not going to break you. But if you are in a fairly high uh, hot running ship like the one I've got here, just make sure you've got a heat sink launcher. So I'll go ahead and pop that heat sink launcher off just to see it. We've been scanned, or we're about to be scanned by authorities. They're in the system. There's the heat sink launcher. And the hack is done. We obviously had one type that we had full storage of, but we got all of those others at the same time, and there goes the heat sink, and you're done. Log out, log in, do it until you've filled up enough that you need to go trade. Now, if you're not familiar with the process, the whole process is documented through the rest of this video. And what we want to do first is we want to go to a station, which we're already there, that has an encoded materials trader, open up starport services. And this is only if you've already farmed these. If you haven't farmed these at all, then you don't need to do this. Go to contacts, go to material trader. And for a brief introduction of what material trading does, it allows you to trade, say, some of these and exceptional scrambled emissions data for some of these or any of the others. However, you don't want to go that direction. You don't want to trade lower grade materials for higher as they get very expensive. You're going to only get, let's see, if we want this, you're only going to get one of these for every six of these that you turn in. However, if instead you want to trade these down for those so that you're getting rid of your regular emissions data and getting the exceptional scrambled data, you'll actually get three of these for every one of these. What that means is, is grade 5 materials get pretty expensive because if you're going to trade for these even across the same grade the best you can do is giving six of these or one of these. So don't do that. Now the one that we're going to talk about real quick is adaptive encryptors capture and that's because you can get these every single time you scan one of the four data points at the Jameson wreck Again, Down to Earth Astronomy has this in another video, which I'll also link here, and so you don't need to worry about doing that now. But the idea is, is that if this is the only thing you need, go do the Jameson Rick. It is by far the quickest, because you're going to get 12 or so every time you log in, and you're going to fill up your 100 very quickly, and then you can also trade them down for those. But if you really need these other grade 5s, 
that's just not the way to do it. The quickest way to do it is going to be to go scan a science vessel. In this case, we're going to go scan Cave Johnson, which is the science vessel listed in Down to Earth Astronomy's page. However, there are other vessels. So for those other vessels, we can use Inara and a search engine to find them. I haven't found a good way to search for them directly on Inara. They're actually, as far as I know, mega ships, but they don't even show up in the list of mega ships, and they don't seem to have their own class. These science vessels are something kind of unique. So instead, what we do, go to your web browser of choice. In this case, I'm on DuckDuckGo, and just type in the keyword Inara, space, the name of the ship that you're looking for. And it's almost always going to be one of the first results. So in this case, we've done the search on DuckDuckGo. And the first link we see here is star system Irusan. And so if we click on that, we're going to get this page on Inara. And on this page on Inara, you can see the name of the science vessel. You can also see the system that it's currently in. Click on that system. Scroll down a little bit because this page is so big. And what we're trying to look at here is government. If the government type is anarchy, you don't have to worry about the extra method that we're adding here. You can just go do what Down to Earth Astronomy says. However, if it's anything but anarchy, then every time you scan or hack the vessel, you are going to get intercepted by system authorities and you get to run away and all that good stuff. And it's just, it, it makes the farming take a lot longer. So rather than doing that, you can simply find the right system. And since there's multiple science vessels, hopefully you can find one fairly close to you. And then use this extra method added into the end of Down to Earth Astronomy's process. I'm going to go through the entire process here, so you don't have to worry about watching two videos if you don't want to. But the idea is simply you want to add the step of silent running. You do that, and it's total farm time. So back to the material trader. What you want to do here is if you've got a bunch of these, and you don't have a bunch of these, then you can trade some of them, even though they're expensive. So let's say we want to get fill up our anomalous FSD telemetry a little bit more and we've got a bunch of these unusual encrypted files we're going to go ahead and trade and you'll see I have to give 36 to get one so it's really not that valuable but I'll go ahead and give 108 and get three brings my anomalous FSD telemetry up to 144 okay at least I've got some space to hold more of these because you're going to get a bunch of random ones these are not the grades we're really focused on and what's going to happen is if you go out there and you fill up on the lower grades while you're trying to get the grade fives, just accept that you're filled up. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about trying to go trade every single one unless you really need lower grades than what you've been getting. So if unusual encrypted files was almost empty, then sure, go trade some tagged encryption codes for it. But if they're both almost full, just let them fill up. You're going to get messages that say storage is full, but that doesn't mean all storage is full. It just means those types. You're also going to collect these. Assume that we're done here. And we've got our materials traded down so that the big thing is none of our rank fives are full. Oh, look, I've got 73 classified scan fragments. Just to completely demonstrate, what we're going to do is we're going to get some divergent scan data by trading in some classified scan fragments. I'm going to give, let's say, 10. I'm going to get 30. Great. Okay, now none of my rank fives are full time to go farm. And that brings us to the next topic of which ship do you want to do this mission with? If you just have a Sidewinder, you can do it in a Sidewinder. You just have limited jump range and limited cargo capacity, and you need cargo for limpets. However, if you've got other ships, let me give you some ideas. So since we're using silent running and we're using limpets that have variable amount of packing time depending on the size of the controller, then an Anaconda is great. Anacondas run cold, and they can run the largest size of the limpet controller. Uh, if you don't have an anaconda, dolphins run very cold. Uh, if you don't have those, crates, either the Phantom or the Mark II, both run very cold. All three of those will have plenty of storage for you to run this mission on. In this case, I'm actually using a Diamondback Explorer, and it doesn't have good heat. But to give you an idea of how you know whether your ship has good heat, here, I'm going to click on the anaconda right here. And on Coriolis.io, once you've clicked on the individual ship, Way up here, you can see resting heat. And resting heat, the higher the percentage, the better your heat capabilities are. So most ships are going to be in the 30 to 40 range. Anaconda, Dolphin, and Crates all run closer to 60. And also with engineering, you also can be running cooler if you, for instance, have clean drives. Not going to worry about all that. You don't need it. 
I'm running a Diamondback with actually an overcharged power plant. It's not a good heat condition. It's got a size one limpet controller and that's it. Um, but you can look at that for any of the other ships. So for instance, there's the Dolphin, heat's 56. Here's the crate and the heat's almost 60 again. And then here's my Diamondback Explorer right now and its heat's all the way down to almost 40%. So not great, but that's okay. You've got time, you've got heat sink launchers if you need them, whatever. And that gets us to talking about what you need to do for outfitting. So for outfitting, at a minimum, you want to have a recon limpet controller. A size one takes 22 seconds to hack. That's the slowest. Size three is 17 seconds, and the biggest one, which I think is a size seven, is like 10 seconds. And so it's just almost an instant hack. You don't have to worry about overheating. And then you need a cargo whack. In this case, I have a couple. This gives me 32 limits worth of storage. You're gonna use one limpet every single hack. So that's 32 runs. That's more than enough. You're gonna be trading in by then, all good. If you're on Sidewinder, you're probably gonna be limited to like two or three limpets and you'll have to synthesize every time. It's gonna take forever, but you can do it. If you don't have those, then obviously use your starport services. See if the starport that you're at right now has those. And if it doesn't, then you're going to use Anara again. For Anara, for finding outfitting, you just go to outfitting, you come down here. If you're using something like ED Discovery and it's hooked into EDSM, then it will automatically know you where you're at. So we're currently in San Juan. And then you just type in the name of the thing you want. So you want a recon limpet controller. And let's say you've got a size five hardpoint open for it. So search. And it comes down here and it tells you the next closest place, which is, in this case, Philips Laboratory, and it has a large pad. Perfect. If, you, if you're right there, go ahead and get it. And then the other thing you need, you can do the same thing with it, is cargo. If the station you're at doesn't have the right size cargo, then go find somebody who does. Once you've done all that, you're pretty much done with Anara for this session. We have two cargo racks, another cargo rack, and your recon limpet controller. The recon limpet controller and at least one cargo rack and you're set. We know the name of the system that we want to go to, in this case, is Urusan, and that will change for Cave Johnson. It jumps every three weeks. So, you can, if you want, track what, in, what materials you've got so that you know what you need by looking over here in the right-hand panel under Materials, under Inventory. But that's kind of a pain, and it's not sorted by encoded types, so you have to look through all of them. What I recommend you do is run ED Discovery. And here you can see I've pulled up ED Discovery. It's an overlay on the video. It's just another app you can run on the side window. Or if you've only got one monitor, you can put it up on your screen looking like this. You can also use a program called uh, ED Engineer. But ED Discovery kind of does a whole lot of other things and it's very useful to have. And if you look there, this is under the Material Trader tab. And this has all of those same materials we just saw at the trader. And we can keep an eye on how many we've got. So as we're collecting, this will go up. You can also hook ED Discovery in, as mentioned earlier, to Inara, and it will do things like tracking where you're at, uploading system data as you go through systems to help other people find stuff. In this case, we'll go ahead and jump to Urosan. And find the ship that we're going for. In this case, it's the Cave Johnson. There it is. Now at this point, especially if this system has a station, if you need limpets, go to the station. If you need to repair, go to the station. If you have bounties in this system on you, i.e. the authorities are looking for you, maybe you did this process and it got screwed up, go pay off your bounties before you go to the ship. Then go to the ship. We've already got what we need, so we're just gonna head straight there. scan something like this and you wonder why it's usually the hard points got it targeted so we're going to do a data link scan on the main ship and so far this is the same process as down there in the strongest video then we're going to come over here go to the hackable data transmitter and if you don't already know what it looks like you can find that over here under contact once you've got that, you need to get within 350 meters. And 
And now we can scan it. So scan the hackable data transmitter. Again, you don't need silent running yet. You're about to. So in your contacts, under target, find the sub-target for the limpet docking point recon. Now we've got it targeted. And we're going to go over and get close to it. You don't actually have to do that. The limpet will transfer its way over. Now, this is the point at which it's different from the down to earth astronomy video. And this is what makes it work when you're not in an anarchy system, immediately engage silent running. And if you don't know how, you can do it from ship, silent running, you can switch it there. I have it bound to a hotkey, so silent running on, and you'll notice I have my recon limpet controller bound to my firing as well. So silent running on, fire that recon limpet. There it goes. And you need to stay in silent running for as long as the limpet is hacking until you see materials appear. And remember, you've got your EDD overlay over here, and you can see. Now, it's called the System Authority, so they got 10 seconds till they show up. You've got more than 10 seconds left on the hack, so you're leaving your uh, silent running on. If you don't have silent running on at this point, you get a bounty on you, and you have to run away from the authorities and go pay off that bounty and possibly go to jail. I did that once already. So, we've got it. We've turned off silent running, so we're no longer gaining heat. We did not get a bounty. We just got scanned. And they don't care about us. Done. Silent running was the trick right there. If you hadn't been doing it, you would now be running away from the authorities while your shield was charging up, and you'd be like, oops. So, that's it. And at that point, you can see that we got a bunch of data in the right-hand panel. You can take a look on EDD over to the right of the screen, and you can see that you got that data. Or, if you've forgotten what data it was that you got on ED Discover, you can also go to your History tab right here, and we can see that we got divergent scan data, we got cracked industrial firmware, we got open symmetric keys, and modified embedded firmware. Okay, and then just go back to your material trader tab again to see those. And so it looks like we got one of our rake five and the rest were lower, but that's fine. You're filling it all up. And then as you fill up your grade fives, you don't need nearly as many of them. So you can go trade some of those down. We'll repeat the process one more time just in case you want a refresher, but that's pretty much it right there. So we want to do it again, exit to the main menu. Just continue, go back to solo play. You will appear at the ship and you have to go through the whole process of scanning it twice again, then doing your limpet controller in silent running mode. So we're going to deploy our hard points. We're going to select the ship, scan it. Hackable data transmitter, again, if you can't find it, it's there in your contacts. Scan it after you're at 350 or less. Go find the limpet docking point. Get a little bit closer just to save a little bit of time on silent running. Engage silent running. Fire your limpet. I took a little bit too long on firing the limpet. The first trigger didn't register. And that just means that you just need to watch your heat. If you go over 100% for a little while, it's not going to break you. But if you are in a fairly high, uh, hot running ship like the one I've got here, just make sure you've got a heat sink launcher. So I'll go ahead and pop that heat sink launcher off just to see it. We've been scanned, or we're about to be scanned by authorities. They're in the system. There's the heat sink launcher. And the hack is done. We obviously had one type that we had full storage of, but we got all of those others at the same time. And there goes the heat sink, and you're done. Log out, log in. Do it until you've filled up enough that you need to go trade.